podcasts have exploded in popularity over the past decade and made their mark as a new form of media that isn't going anywhere. It's a fascinating medium in that it's completely uncensored. Anyone can make one, no matter how good or bad. It's a place where you can find your voice and your audience. Christy Hunsworth has been producing podcasts longer than anyone I know and is setting the standard for how it should be done. With breakout hits like The Grady's and their first podcast, Star Wars in Character, Christy and her husband now produce over 25 different shows. Many of these podcasts are original productions, done with a variety of hosts, covering everything from obscure board games to special effects tech talk. For over a decade, Christy has mastered the art of producing podcasts, but that's not even her full-time job. In addition to being a mother, Christy also works full-time at Universal Studios Florida. And this is where her story gets interesting. After rising through the corporate ranks and achieving great success, Christy saw a series of unfortunate events that left her overworked and overwhelmed emotionally after finally losing her mother to cancer. But hitting that wall, asking for help, and stepping outside her comfort zone changed everything. Christy had a chance to rediscover her passions, pursuits, and purpose. She has since found a new niche at Universal and makes time for all the other things that she loves. And that's not just podcasts. Christy has stepped up her game and stepped back into the world of improv and stage acting, pursuing all the things that keep her happy, healthy, and only halfway crazy. Christy's been able to design the lifestyle she loves, defining her purpose and performing every step along the way. I hope you enjoy my candid conversation with Christy Hunsworth. <laughs> but that Butter one and jam, really, but no. That one doesn't line up Shits so much. Shits and giggles. <laughs> I have not. You know what? I'm going to try it, Nate. I'm going to try shitting tonight, and I'm going to giggle my ass off. How are you going to pull that off? I don't know, but maybe it'll help, you know. <laughs> I'll just think of something fun. Oh, no, I'll watch like a Jim Gaffigan thing as go. I'm on the John. <laughs> right. I'll just be like, <laughs> we went to see him, and he actually does not like the Hot Pocket joke anymore. Oh, I'm sure. It's he hates worn the Hot out. Pocket. Yeah. I mean, you figure, what's that, 10 years deep now at least? Oh, yeah. What's funny about those comedians and all that, like, I'm fascinated with stand-up comedians and like how they evolve their routine. Yeah. And what sucks, and it's, it's really like, you think about it, it's like a speech. Oh, yeah. You know, and like, but like once they get their... um speech like mastered and perfected like they're ready to move on but that's right when it becomes popular for yeah, like right when they're having to, to do it, it over and oh, over and yeah. over like uh, old rock band having to play those same songs oh, like, think about over, it, like, and over and over and all those ba- those 80s <laughs> bands or like or think about the 70s bands we did oh, it for like 50 years Casey like, and the Rolling Sunshine Stones band do it just because they don't know any other words to any other songs <laughs> really? they just know there's they no that got beat. funky music. That's <laughs> yeah. it. That's all they know. Uh, we had Smash Mouth play on New Year's Eve when I was at City Walk, and they had two. We had we had Smash Mouth and Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, and they were back to back. So they'd be Smash Mouth, and then there'd be Big Bad, and then Smash Mouth ended the night. And then I'm surprised Big they Bad had Voodoo enough Daddy. songs to get through all that. They didn't. <laughs> yeah, I was they didn't. Say. I swear it they had was like one song each. It right? was <laughs> Rock's All Star, and then it was the Shrek song. And I'm a believer. Well, I'm a believer. It was those two songs. <laughs> and I was like, they played their first set, and they play, everybody's like, well, yeah. somebody. <laughs> Second set comes along. Somebody. Oh, <laughs> wait. <laughs> Shit, you played this before. <laughs> this sounds Damn awfully it, familiar. This, this sounds awfully familiar. At least Big, but Big Bad Voodoo Daddy had enough that they could play other things other than Zoot Suit Riot. Because right, that right. was the only thing that made it to the radio, their stuff. Mm-hmm. But... God damn, Smash Mouth. <laughs> I remember so we went into their dressing room afterwards and we found white powder on the floor and we're like, oh, God. Well, and yeah. it was actually like baby powder. So oh, I was that's like, right. <laughs> talking powder up their butts or something. I shit. guess. Because they oh, were singing funny. out of them. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, on that note, <laughs> <laughs> on that note. <laughs> this is the Extraordinary Podcast. <laughs> and my guest today is, is Christy Hunsworth. How's it going? It's going good. It's going good, Nate. My new friend. Yes. <laughs> the podcasting guru. Oh, I expert. wouldn't say that. I would say I, I know a bit about a lot of things. Yes, yes. 
And you and you have your finger in a lot of things, or your hand in a lot of things. <laughs> that, that's how that works. Say, that's horrible. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Chop. <laughs> this is the Extraordinary Podcast, and my guest today is Christy Hunsworth. Yes. <laughs> what you got your hands in these days? Oh, well, I got, a lot of my, got my hands in a lot of things, Nick. Uh, well, uh, I got into podcasting about, as a guest, pretty much as, a, as an extra voice on my husband's podcast, about 10, 15 years ago. And then... And what was that first podcast? Um, Star Wars and Character. Nice. He does like obscure Star Wars characters. I could give a shit less about Star Wars, and that was my perspective because all of them really cared about it, and I did. They not. were nerding out over it, and you kind of the one that keep them in check. Kind yeah, of I was like the, you, <laughs> reality you, check. You realize it's a stupid movie, right? <laughs> right. So I mean, I kind of helped out with that. I did the voiceover work. I did the intro. I am nice. the voice of that podcast in the intro. <laughs> nice. And, uh, and then we got, which the, is funny cause it's mostly guys. So they've yeah, got it is all mostly guy. guys. And, and then there's, there's me introducing the whole show. That's awesome. Um, and then we started, uh, we got to talking about like how much we loved eighties movies. Cause we're all pretty much child. That was the main thing that we had in common. That yeah. was our common ground, that yeah. love of the eighties. And I, cause I'm a child of the seventies. Well, late seventies. I was born in the seventies. Yeah, Therefore, I guess I'm a child of the eighties. Right. Um, right. and, and, Really, there was nothing else to do for entertainment other than to watch movies. So you really did watch a lot. And I had a trick of the fact that I had pirated HBO. Nice. So I watched a lot of movies. So how would you pull that off, pirating HBO? My father, being the inventive son of a gun he was, somehow got something where it, it was physically a tin soup can. And it had a little base on it and a cord that ran all the way into our house. <laughs> and it pulled the signal from the mountain right next to ours. That is so awesome. it, it th- we didn't get any other channels. I mean, we had Just one of those little, one, one yeah. of those ones like we had the clicker with the four buttons and it right. was ka chink, ka chink, ka chink. <laughs> but we had, you could put it on zero and you could get HBO. And it, we have no idea. It wasn't consistent HBO, but it wasn't like Cinemax where you couldn't see it and you'd have to look yeah, you through had to the like lines. Yeah, you had to see it through the neon Try to look through the lines right. and see where it was. <laughs> no, we got, we got HBO, and that's how I watched a lot of movies and a lot of – I watched things intensely. Usually, like, after I'd do my homework or something, I'd be like, I got TV time, so I got to watch HBO. Nice. And I got to watch a lot of – a lot of my movies, and that's usually the kicker whenever I do these, we do our podcast, I'll be like, well, we tell our history of when we saw it. A lot of times my co-hosts will be like, ah, I saw it in the theater, da 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 Pirated HBO. Yeah, I saw it on some jacked up HBO screen. Pirated, or I've never seen it. Yeah. And then I'll be like, I watched it an hour and a half ago. <laughs> Our usual answer to that question was skipping school on a Tuesday kind of thing. <laughs> See, we, the thing was is that it, we didn't have a convenient movie theater, so it wasn't like we could do that. Like you, you know, I've heard stories like my husband used to go like into one theater, then you'd go into another. Yeah, like and different things like theater that. to Couldn't theater. Couldn't do that thing. in ours because you know there's, <laughs> there's only two theaters. There's two theaters, and you can't really. Well, I'm gonna see this or this. It's the same thing. I've seen the same right. thing. Um, and they're usually showing the same thing at the same time. Et both theaters. Can't so. get into, you, you're limited your experience. But uh, so we got to talking about that and we wanted to see if they held up. So that was our first podcast as a group that I was fully on as a co-host. Uh, and we did the great 80s movie debate and we'd see if they held up. And, and a lot of them do, but a lot of them, whoa, they What don't. was the first one you did? <clears throat> we did, oh, I can tell you exactly what it is. <laughs> see, I, I am also extremely for technology. organized when it comes to shows because I like to make sure that I keep myself accountable. So I keep it on a Google Sheets. Well, you almost have to because, um, not to go off into a sidebar too far yet, but you guys have what? We were talking about yesterday. You had to go through and count how many shows you had. You weren't even sure. You're oh, up to God. eight shows right now that you guys are personally yeah. involved in. Yeah. And then you have other shows on top of that that you guys yeah. like executive produce and that sort of thing. Yeah, we host a lot um, because we have some really great content producers and and. But they're just looking for a place to, you know, put, put, a, put, put it, it in a home, yeah. you know. So we've done a total of 127 episodes. Our very first episode was The Never Ending Story, released in 2010. Excellent choice. So Great one to start off with. It was. And Great I, 80s movie. Oh, I was just reading today that you can go and ride Felcor in this Belgian 
movie museum. No way. You can of actually course. get on like, the Falcor. Get through the whole oh, thing. <laughs> Probably like exactly how they made it back then because that technology was so limited. It was like just a green screen. Just a green screen. This giant just green furry screen thing. It. Yep. It's, <laughs> that it's you a jump big, on. Huge yeah. thing too. I was like, oh, oh my god, I would go on that in a second. Giant furry sled looking thing <laughs> with a head on it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> really surprised dog. that they've never ever come up with like a never ending story play place. For kids. You know, that's a good point. Yeah, coming from Universal, I'm sure, yeah, yeah well, you know, that's your background. <laughs> it's also a very old movie. So. Yeah, that's true. It's but, I mean, the fact that they course. have something like that in, um, I think it's Belgium, someplace, yeah, wherever the they Netherlands filmed it. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So we, we started with that, and then we kind of, it's really hard to get four people in the same place at the same time. Our schedules got out of whack, and so after a few years, we kind of dwindled down, and um, I have been at Universal for a long time and I knew a lot of people who had great ideas about movies so I wanted to have them on so I started it up again huh. um, pretty pretty much in earnest every other week we'd release and, and we've had some really great co-hosts and, and just people that really love movies too. So you kind of bring degree. in like some guest host kind of thing to yeah, keep I it going to be more consistent. After a while it's, it's kind of like you have the same four people talking and, and, and then you can get some, some new blood in there and, yeah, and no, get some new perspective. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And, and even now, I still look at, okay, where do we go with the future? How do we get this more more varied of an experience? How do we keep moving forward? Um, yeah. And it's hard when you've had something around for a while uh, that how do, you, how do you keep it fresh? How do you get new, new people to listen? That's a great thing to talk about for this conversation because we're obviously at PodFest. And yes, we're we doing our, our Orlando thing. And, um, you know, there's so many podcasters here and there's so many new podcasters and one of the things I was thinking about or we were discussing was how long what's the average lifespan of a podcast how many of these guys like and and it got me thinking as I'm talking to a lot of these people sometimes you know what what may be a really great idea there's lots Mm -hmm. of really really great ideas but how do you carry that idea into year three yeah you know or year five or like you know like what is that and a lot of these podcasts, like, they have to evolve. They need to evolve to be interesting. They need to. Just to keep it interesting I know, to I, mean, I feel like mine's getting it. stale. And I even, I'm not even a year deep. But I'm already thinking, like, dude, we need to start getting this to the next level. You know, th- what's, it, what's next? I think, I think a lot of it is it, the lifespan of a, of a podcast really depends on the interest of the host. If, if people just feel like you're didactic and you're just kind of going through the motions and you're right. not really enjoying it anymore. Or you can sit and play on your phone while you are recording. Uh, that means you're not engaged. Right. And when you as the host are no longer engaged, then it's time to, you got to flip the script and figure out where you need to go to make it what you want it to be. And then a lot of times you got to listen to your audience. Right. Um, a big thing that I found out in in reinventing and re, you're kind of retooling it with diff, a whole different people is that I found out from one of my friends that, Certain podcasts he can't listen to because he listens to them on his way to work. Well, he works 35 minutes from home. So for him, the average podcast has to be about 35 minutes he to needs at the to most fit an that hour. Sweet spot. Like yeah. he can get he can get home and he wants to come back. He doesn't want to do it over multiple days. Right. He wants to do it on his way home, right. way to work and on the way back. I don't want a, a, one episode to take me a week to get through kind yeah. of thing. Which is the problem I run into with my long form oh stuff. My gosh. <laughs> we did one that and I couldn't, and I tried to edit it down. Yeah, I it's really tough tried sometimes, right? Because I was like, oh, my God, how do, what do I sacrifice? Because this is all really good content. Is we so did an, hard, dude. We did an episode part. of The Thing, and I had some amazing friends that were on it who are passionate about that movie. Nice. Like, passionate <laughs> about that movie. And I couldn't. So what I ended up having to do is breaking it into two one-hour bits and just saying, hey, Come back next week for the next hour of <laughs> right. discussion about the thing. This this discussion has now gotten longer than the movie. <laughs> that, but it was that's, really that's good. You know you're digging in deep. But it was really good because they had a whole bunch yeah. of like deep, deep cut facts about the movie and like a passion for the movie. So it's like yeah. I well, don't again, know. like as long as it's engaging, yeah. then I mean, like you know, look at some of those Joe Rogan ones where they're getting into some really deep conversations where like yeah. you don't mind going two three hours in no and one of the things uh, but it's hard it's not easy to do and one of the speakers that we uh we had today was like looking at it because everybody every you find in the more that you try to get into podcasting everybody's going to have advice everybody's going to have their take on what makes a successful podcast and sometimes they'll charge you for it but the big thing he said was 
there, there's some kind of myth about the average podcast should be 22 minutes long. Well, that's BS. No, it, it takes as long as it takes. Right. As long as your content isn't going on too far of a tangent and you've now gone from A to abracadabra. You know, mm-hmm. like you haven't gone totally off the range. Yeah, because sometimes there's just a lot of stuff to cover. I mean, that's, yeah. that's my thing is I want to make sure that I thoroughly cover the subject. And, again, my thought process with the whole thing was I'd rather cover it too deep and then cut and take yeah. away and pull off what, what isn't very engaging. You know, if we do go down a little bit of a wormhole, I can always eliminate, but I can never add. There, again, to my detriment, then I get in there and I don't want to cut anything. And next thing you know, you got two and a half hours and for – my level, two and a half hours, it gets boring. You know, like oh, yeah. I, I got to improve. Go, oh, I got to be a lot better interviewer to keep I am, two and a half hours fresh. I, I the only way I can hit two and a half hours is if I'm stuck in really bad traffic. Yeah, and then I need death metal. I'm At that point, I don't need somebody <laughs> talking about their feelings. I need somebody to actually like talking about punch somebody things. in the throat. Yes. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So you said your husband's kind of what got you started down this whole podcasting thing. Mm-hmm. What was it that made you want to start doing your own thing with the 80s music? Or with well, the 80s uh, movies, rather. Sorry. Well, I would look at what he would have to edit it and post it. And it, it was so time consuming. And he, some things were not his passion. And The Grady Show was not his passion. He does one about Star Wars, of course, and that's the one he's been really solid on. And as well as um, Halloween Horror Nights. So he... He had another focus. So my thing was, is I really like doing it. Why don't I take it? Teach me how to do it so that I can take it off your plate. And all you need to do is post it on the website. And that's all you have to do. Right, just I will edit stuff. it. I will make sure it's all ready to go. It's equalized. It's ready. So you can just drag the file out of the Dropbox and put it right in. And so he said, okay, as long as you're willing to take that on, and sometimes, and quite I was, frankly, you could drag it and drop it too, for that matter, if you want to. I mean, true. Not that much. The problem is, is that our shared drive is a little <coughs> flaky. Oh so yeah. So sometimes <laughs> getting it. Those technology issues can yeah. be a little tricky. Well, I found that's one that even I can't imagine how these video guys do it because some of this oh. file sharing stuff can be such a pain in the neck. And again, my files are a little bit bigger given the length, but um, man, I can't imagine dealing with some of these giant oh, video files. No, absolute no, no. nightmare. That's uh, we do one video podcast, one, and nice. and we haven't really kept up with it because it is so labor intensive. They're a lot more work. That we do one called uh, We're Bored, where uh, we find obscure uh, board games and then we <laughs> play them. And we have uh, one camera that's pointing at him and one pointing at me and then one also pointing down at, at the, the game, game board right, because right. we've had some really good ones we had like the donnie and marie game <laughs> and we did the six million dollar oh no 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 the bionic woman game we oh, had that wow. one uh we just Y'all find digging ones deep man <laughs> oh we find centipede centipede had a Has board a game board game? yeah no yeah way. so we played that and That's it was just like great. Then it Talk about in, 80s, man. Oh, Classic man. 80s. And we've got a bunch. We, we had one. A lot of these are, are a chance for him to buy things that he's always wanted <laughs> to buy. Yeah. There the was truth a, comes out. I know. That, that's like, I was like, did you really just get into Star Wars podcast just so you could buy the little damn droid factory? <laughs> right, right. Is that really why? I need the data. I got to have the information. Like, why do we have the droid factory? <laughs> um, but he, it, the, his big thing, and actually it's one of the games that I love the most. It was called I Want to Bite Your Finger. <laughs> and it's like this really cool board that goes like this and up, and it's Dracula on the upside, and he's got two little fangs, and when you roll a certain number, you have to stick your finger in his mouth. <laughs> the other player has to push a button, and there's a little ink pad on there, and if it's timed right, it'll put two little, like, <laughs> two little holes, like, not holes, but, like, two little yeah, red dots. marks, like he's bit your finger. <laughs> That's great. And it, 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 it is the weirdest, dumbest game I have ever played, but I loved it. It's kind of like the, the original version of that one now where they throw the pie in your face or whatever. <gasps> yes. Yeah, it's like the original version or concept of that. Uh, that's yeah. great. That's why that we really only do one of those because it, it, it yeah. is such a challenge to merge the audio and the And you're and only posting that in, on YouTube or do you post that anywhere else? Um, we have it on our, on our, your website. our website, yeah. yeah. And your website is kind of like a host site for all your podcasts. Yeah. So yeah. let's, since we brought that up, let's, let's go through and just list all the podcasts so we have it on record. If you, I know Ooh, you're going to have to pull up your spreadsheet to, to make sure we get it all in there. But, um, but let's, yeah, let's go through Oh, them. gosh. 
So what's the, what's the website where, you, where they can find everything? It is called neozaz.com. That's N-E-O-Z-A-Z.com. Z-A-Z. So that's, that's been our domain for a long, long nice. time. He actually started that with some buddies of his in high school. Wow. And he's had this dream of doing that. So I just like to contribute stuff to it. That's really cool. <laughs> well, and it's cool that you can support each other in doing that. Yeah, it's, it's like a shared interest and stuff too. It's, it's really weird. It was one of those things where it was all pretty much him. And then I was like, you know what? I'm kind of interested in that too. And it's one of those things where it, it's kind of like a give and take sometimes where he introduces me to things and I introduce him to things. And then it just kind of blossoms. I mean, we've been together for 20 years. So it's like there's not much that we don't share in our likes and dislikes now given i can watch some pretty trashy tv that he does not care for right. but um, they can't have everything in common but yeah you were talking no. about that earlier how like he'll introduce you something and you'll, you'll kind of pick up where he drops off and then take it to that next extreme and yeah i'll kind of compliment each other in that way well it's like <laughs> he can't he he would love to go to these podcast conferences but he can't because he doesn't have that kind of job that can to do that i happen to so i come to these and sometimes i'll text him and be like What's our web hosting? <laughs> what, is, what is this? What's oh yeah, our like speed? we were we were like, talking. You were no trying to figure out who was your host site or yeah, your I was like, I don't publisher. Know. Yeah, like you didn't even. <laughs> I, I I don't know how the sausage That's is made. Great. Sometimes so just right. like. I know my well, little bit of but, it. But, but it's cool because everybody has their role. Like yeah. everybody has their piece that they do. And when you can complement each other like that and be a yin to the yang, that's, yeah. really, that's really a beautiful thing. And it's not always that easy to pull off. you got to no. have a pretty solid relationship to be able to do that. That's great. No. Uh, so Here we go. Okay. Got so these are there. including the ones that we do. Okay. Uh, we have Airplane Minute. Okay. Where we take the movie Airplane Minute by Minute. So each episode is about a 10-minute episode about that. Oh, man, i got to have some homework to dig into. Yeah. We have <laughs> another one called The Best agenda. of Fives where uh, we take a, f- a list of five. It's pretty much a bi- best of five list. Um, what we do also with the Grady's is we, with every 80s movie, we take the best of fives based on that 80s movie. So if it's a horror movie, we'll do best five. The best five horror, horror movies yeah. of the 80s, we'll best five. We'll kind of five, ma- yeah. merge them together. Cool. Uh, Blake Seven in character that. is one that we host uh, from a friend of ours in England. Blake Seven. Blake Seven. Huh. It's it it is all about sci-fi effects. Cool. Uh, the Catacombs of Halloween Horror Nights. That's built around a big event here in Orlando, uh, at Universal. Nice. Effectively speaking, is another one that we host. Uh, now that sounds kind of like personal development type stuff, or is that something different? You said effective speaking. Uh, no, actually, it is mainly about. Oh, that is the one that's all about special effects. So it's oh, talking, effect. yeah, effect. Oh, okay, got you, got you. That one also, that one is the one that's, oh, I got that backwards then. So what's the Blake? Blake 7, seven. is is actually. Uh, <laughs> you can't even keep it. I, I love that. Know. It just makes my day. Blake yeah. 7 is actually a British a British TV show from the 60s. Oh, oh well, yeah. So our friend Eric, Eric some, does I that. I love those old 60s graphics, or 70s oh, yeah. graphics. That's awesome. Uh, and then, and then, effectively speaking, where they take different movies and they take different effects, effects and talk about that. Nice. Cool. Uh, my husband's really into War of the Worlds, so he everything War, War of the Worlds. That is one. Nice. Uh, the Grady's, of course. Um, I have questions. Hmm. Uh, that was one that we we uh, had that it would just be all kinds of questions. Like uh, we talked to our friend Lou talked about the Mummers Parade in Philadelphia. I'm not familiar. The Mummers Parade is this very strange parade that hap- takes place in downtown Philadelphia on New Year's Day. And it is like 150 years old. Huh. And it's bizarre. It's weird. Huh. But it's all about like just things that people have questions about. Cool. Uh, Indiana Jones in character that a friend of ours was doing. Uh, is it beer yet? That's my husband's podcast. Where oh, yeah, because y'all have like been getting into some home brewing oh, and whatnot. Oh, yes, we are. Digging so into that world. That is that is a little bit of a video podcast where he shows, like, here's how I put in the mash. Here's oh, how yeah, because you're actually making yeah. something there. There's actually something to capture. Uh, killing my Kindle. Huh. Which that one, that one, some of them haven't been kept up. Uh, is that going to back to regular books or something? <laughs> yeah. I like that idea. That's an interesting concept. Uh, and then uh, past the popcorn, we have a couple of friends that like to go and, and watch movies, and then they give their reviews on current movies. Oh, cool. Um, Seinfeld in character, sequel harder. That's What is the Seinfeld character? What, Seinfeld you just, like, in go character. Into, into some it, of the side characters? Yeah. 
That one we haven't really kept up on, but we still have all the episodes. We'll we'll take an odd, uh, an obscure character from Seinfeld and talk about him. Huh. Um, sequel cool harder. Too. A friend of ours does that one where he'll take the sequels of things like all the Jaws movies or all the um, Indiana Jones movies yeah. or Bond movies, like anything nice. like that. Uh, we do a couple specials. We've done, <laughs> we've broken into like audio comedy kind of things where uh, we found like we found a really weird, obscure place called Burger Chef. It was a fast food restaurant, and it used to come with these little plastic record. You know, the, remember when they used to give out albums, but they were like just sheets of vinyl that had a, a record on it. And you oh, could yeah, stick it on yeah. your record player and play like it. It was like square. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So this was the adventures of Burger Chef and Jeff. What? And it was these weird short adventures, which were slightly erotic if you took them the wrong way. Um, <laughs> but, but they weren't meant to be that, but... What uh, so that's the kind of stuff we do. Uh, Star Wars in character, of course. <laughs> We're bored. And then uh, What We Say in the Shadows, which is uh, what we do in the shadows is a TV show that came from a movie. And we watch it. And we're about to start the second season. And we're going to try and do live, like, instant reaction shows. Cool. Yeah, so, like, a, like a live feed kind of thing. Yeah. Nice. And then, of course, Two Girls, One Brew, which yeah, is coming. Th- that's the new one that's com- that on, in coming. the works. Nice. It's coming. That's awesome. So you guys are like deep into it, man. We we are. That's amazing. He is, and I am on that train. But yet you both still maintain regular yep. nine to fives. Just don't know how, but well, yes. Well, that was one of the things I want to talk about. I mean, I, we haven't really discussed what your husband does. I'd, I'd be honest with you. I kind of assumed as much as all of that. I mean, how you fit a job in and on top of all that. It's crazy, but um, two things I want to talk about. One that is, was your your time at Universal, mm-hmm. um, where you kind of were in that management role for a while, and then realized that that was like kind of killing you, and that was not like a, from a lifestyle per- yeah. perspective. And a lot of, of it had to. I, I'm I'm an only child, and my mother got really sick, so that sometimes life makes the choice for you, and you don't realize how incredibly stressed you might be. Or how you may be at the end of your effectiveness in a, in a position, both for the position's sake and for your sake. Right. That it's not healthy for Run either. Run course kind you're of thing. Not, you're not doing the greatest job, and it's not It's not, it's not doing you. you any favors either. <laughs> um, and I, uh, my sleep patterns were all screwed up, and, and I just worried all the time, and I felt responsible all the time. Like, I was on call all the time. And I probably shouldn't have to have been, but I I put a lot of pressure on myself. And then to also take care of a sick family member, having to worry about them all the time, that that was like a second job. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was taking her to dialysis twice a week. I had so many responsibilities with that that it was really hard to fulfill my role as as manager. And finally, it just came to a head and a decision was made that I needed to step down. So... Then I got an hourly job, and I I haven't had an hourly job <laughs> for 18 years. Like, and ease that burden a little oh bit. Oh, my gosh. Lighten and, that load. And then I was it, it just kind of freed everything up for me to just really follow my passions, which I was like, you know what? this I had a lot of time on my hands between jobs, and I was like, you well, know yeah, what? Because you were used to working 80 hours a week. And yeah. Like, to go from that to, like, to a nothing. normal schedule, it's like... Well, or even just a normal, you know, 40-hour I mean, that's still yeah. your, I mean, it's like all of a sudden, hey, I got a life again. Yeah. And I went on a leave for about three months where oh, I nice. didn't work. And uh, that was weird because it was like, yeah, I had the time you to take really care of You really shut it down. But then I really had time to look at, that's when I, that's when I started the 80s, the Grady's up again. It was I had the time. Right. And, and the bandwidth and sanity and I, everything I else. Had, yeah. I had that. And, and then um, my mom passed away and that gave me even more time. So then I really started focusing both on this and, and on the theater work I do. So Well, that, that's a perfect segue because I was going to say, not only are you doing all of these podcasts, and a regular job, but you've got another hobby that takes a tremendous amount of time on top of, like, you were talking about all this stuff you got to do after this. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. How you're packing all this in. Tell me about the theater world that you're living in. So I, I've always been involved in theater 
<laughs> since I was a kid. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, you don't get to do that when you have a full time management job. You just don't. You yeah, just there's, don't, just, there's, again, no, there's time. no bandwidth. Yeah. So when everything just kind of fell away, I reconnected with some friends who had um, a sketch comedy group. And I auditioned, and it was so funny because they had seen me in one light for so long. And that, that they were like, <laughs> where the hell was this? Where, where did this come from? I was like, it's Who's always, this person? It's always been there. Just you can't do that at work. <laughs> yeah. And, underneath, hidden underneath the shell of a manager. <laughs> That's uh, great. And it was, it was so much fun, and it was distracting, and, and it allowed me to write which I hadn't done in nice. so long. And then on top of that, then I also became acquainted with an improv theater that did long form, which is different from that whose line is it anyway kind of thing. Right. Where it's, it, you're taking a full character through, you're doing like a 20, 25 minute no show kidding. based on the suggestions. And All you're making improv. fully wow. fleshed out fun characters and, and taking it through different kind of games. Yeah, it's like a full development process. Yeah. Like really developing character off of that. And really huh. taking the audience on that journey. So yeah, I that's really, cool. that really fueled me. And, uh, so now that's part of my life too now. Yeah, you just rolled that all into one big ball of wax. Now you got to figure out how to do a podcast, something to do with yeah, that. Next, right? <laughs> I, yeah, I, luckily uh, the good thing about podcasts, especially the short ones, is you can possibly do three or four of them in one night and release them slowly. Right, right. Well, and that's one of the things that's a little bit different between the two of us is like you're not yeah. putting out nearly as the long form of what I need to reevaluate. You're much but, more thorough than yeah, I am. Well, I don't know about that. I think I'm, like I said, a little more long-winded probably at the end of the day. But um, <laughs> So given all that, what does an ideal everyday day look like for you? Okay, an ideal day would be one where my dog doesn't wake me up at 3 in the morning. <laughs> Is that a regular occurrence? Oh, yeah, because I work really early. Like Tomorrow I have to work at 5.30 in the morning. Ugh. And um, so, you know, it's one that I can wake up on my own terms, <laughs> get up, <laughs> uh, go to my computer, do a little bit of writing, go to work, come home, relax for a little bit, make some dinner, and then go to rehearsal. Nice. I like being busy. I like yeah. feeling like I have a purpose. Clearly. <laughs> well, for a while there, I didn't. I had nothing, and I felt like there was this big, gaping, sucking hole that was like, I, I have nothing to give to. And I, I have stuff I want to give, yeah. but I have well, nowhere it, to put it. It's because I think that you know, we're meant to struggle. We're meant to push. Yeah. We're meant to, you know, to have something to resist. You know, to resist. You know, yeah. I think that's kind of like inbred into who we are as people. Um, is it safe to say that you're not an uh, early bird? You're more of a night owl? I'm actually a morning person. Oh, are you? Okay. I really am. I nice. just would like to sleep past 3.30. Yeah. <laughs> like my not quite ideal. that early in no, the morning. No, I'm like, a 7 <laughs> o'clocker. Yeah. Right. Seven o'clock. Yeah. I'm a dawn I'm a, is pretty reasonable. Like I am a pretty functioning human up, being yeah. at seven o'clock. Yeah. But but on the opposite end, that means by nine o'clock, jammies and fluffy uh, fluffy shoes. So I am with not. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even doing this podcast as late as we are, man. I'm like, dude, I'm I am ready for bed and have been for a minute. But I'm I'm still trying to <laughs> muscle through because we got to get these in while we can. <laughs> uh, we were just talking about that our window of opportunity is pretty tight on this one. So um. Gotta take advantage. So, what's something weird or different about you compared to most other people that has contributed to some of your success? I was gonna just stop at weird. I was gonna say <laughs> that I can fit my entire fist in my mouth, but that does not really count as well, a that's talent. A, I asked my buddy Pablo the question. He's talking about his puffy nipples. I'm like, no, all right. So, I'm gonna throw in the geared towards your success or geared something to do. Success. I think. I think a big thing that I've learned about myself, especially through this process that I didn't know I had is that I, I love to get people on a jag of talking. I love to hear people just unadulterated, just talk. I have one friend. <laughs> Let me introduce you to my daughters. <laughs> <laughs> Because, good Lord, they don't shut up. You just say, hi. <laughs> yeah. And go. <laughs> but, I mean, it's so, I, I, to be honest, I'm actually kind of an introverted extrovert. I guess that's a thing. No, I get it. Yeah, sure. Um, and, and one of my biggest fears when I first started doing uh, sketch comedy or any kind of comedy 
is hosting. Hosting was terrifying to me. And that's also kind of why I took on podcasting is because I was forced to host. I was driving that ship, and if I didn't talk, it was not going forward. So it kind of made me take on my most uncomfortable thing that I don't feel comfortable nice. doing. Yeah, it kind of made you put yourself out there a little bit. Yeah. yeah and, I love and, that. But the return on it has been amazing. So, I mean, now it's like, all right, I'll be the first to step up and go do something now. But inside, I'm going, stop, sit down, <laughs> sit down, shut up, sit down. Well, we were both cutting it up as we were doing our duties oh, in yeah. line over there. We were both getting into our groove. Oh, I will get down and dance. Well, um, so you're a big producer of podcasts, but you're also a major consumer of podcasts. I was oh, so yes, pleased that you had checked mine out when we talked about it. Like, next time we ran into each other, you had already checked out an episode, which I thought was really, really cool because a lot of people see say they're going to check you out, oh, yeah. but many very rarely do. Um, number one, thank you for that, for checking That's me out. And number two, tell me about some of the ones that you're into. What are some of the podcasts that you're digging on? Uh, well, one thing that I, I'm almost a little ashamed of is, and we were talking about it, that one thing that I love about PodFest is that it's all about indie indie podcasts. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, and Mrs. America, guys. everybody doing their own and not with also having a, a a, a career on television or... Right, they're not already a celebrity yeah. or, you know, yeah. And sometimes I feel like the field has been kind of muddled by that. And so, uh, the, sadly, I, I have to say, though, most of my podcasts are celebrity podcasts. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> but some things... Do I as like, I say, not as I do. <laughs> it's right, kind of. It, it actually changes. Like, sometimes I'll be a fan of one and then just be like, Nah, I'm done with this. Yeah. I'm sick of listening to this voice. Uh, but I've listened to the, some of the ones, especially on, on – I've listened to a couple of iHeart ones pretty regularly. Stuff You Should Know. Those things are yeah, really like just – Because yeah. there's no – I mean, there's sometimes a through line. There might be a theme for a little while. But otherwise, it's going to go all over the place. Yeah, it's always fresh. It's always fresh. You never know where it's going to go or where it's going to come from. Um, it keeps and, you engaged. Yes. Right? That's been one of the challenges for me is, like, how do you keep it fresh? How do you keep it engaging? And yeah. for me, it's like i got to have interesting guests like you to <laughs> keep that going because Lord knows I get boring after a while. All right, so here's an interesting question okay. I like to ask folks. What's your favorite item under $100 that you could not live without that you use on a regular basis? That I use on a regular basis? Yeah, cheaper the better. I'm going to have to say, this is going to sound really weird. It's going to be a food because... I, I like food. Okay. Bring it. English muffins. English muffins. Every morning I have to have an English muffin. Now, are you a Thomas girl? Do you have to have the Thomas English I am, muffins? I or? am not. <laughs> We've got the mariachi pan oh, rolling geez. in. That's that is. Uh, just for those who can't see, uh, we have a we have a mariachi at least band. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine piece mariachi band rolling through. Looking they all look too. thrilled to be able to do it. Oh, wait, nope. There's, there's no more one. of them. There's 12. There's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They're rolling. Uh, where were we? <laughs> that was the traditional part of the birthday. So, birth English thing. muffins. <laughs> English muffins. It's going to sound silly because I, I really, I just really like them. Yeah? I always think of them. How do you do them? I put them in the toaster. Yeah. And then I'll either put some almond butter on them. Nice. Or some butter and some honey. Nice. And that, like, really starts my day. Excellent. I've tried doing oatmeal. I've tried doing other things, but they don't start my day right. Yeah. And awesome. I'm not picky about my English muffins. I mean, I like the nooks and crannies and yeah. stuff. But I'm just as good with the cheap Aldi brand. Nice. Oh, I love that. That's in my wheelhouse. Something about it. All the English it. muffins. I know all about them. Especially the sourdough. I oh. do uh, I do butter and then peanut butter and jelly. Ah, uh, yeah. That's, uh, like, but but you got to have the butter on there, too, first. Yeah. So if I feel exotic and I have a banana, I'll do peanut butter and banana. So you got the the Two Girls, One Brew podcast coming up next. Yep. Ten years from now, what do you think the world of podcasting is going to look like? And then what is your world of podcasting? Gonna, what would you like for your world to look like with podcasting? In I particular? would definitely like to be able to produce it from beginning to end. Like to learn how to do the website myself and to import it myself and have nice. a little more ownership and uh, understand the tech a little bit better. 
Uh, right now, I have basic rudimentary skills to not make myself look stupid. But uh, I would like well, we to... we can always get better, right? Especially yeah. Especially when it comes to editing stuff. It's like, you can go as deep as you want to. Yeah, and it, there's so many things that you, when somebody says, oh, I ought to edit with this or this or this or this, I'm like, I, I don't know. It's a program on my computer. I, I watch the little squiggles. <laughs> and my husband always laughs at me. He's like, what the hell are you talking about? The little squiggles. I'm, I'm making sure the squiggles are evened out. <laughs> He's just as like, long as the squiggles look it's right, we're good. It's the sound. It's the sound. Yeah. That's, that's, sound that's you. <laughs> Um, I think in 10 years, I hope. That's funny because most people want to kind of do the opposite where they want to have less uh, ownership no. over the whole thing. Like they want to like, let me just on. do this part and let I'm, y'all do all the rest. Nah, I'm a control freak. Yeah, I, I, I want, yeah. I want to understand what I'm doing. I hate, I only, I hate only half knowing what I'm doing. Right. I know the feeling. So I'm, that if I really understood what I can do, then that means I can go further with it and I can push it. Like, I, I would love to be able to edit music a little bit better than I do. Um, I'd love to spend a year just in Adobe, just learning yeah. all the different Adobe platforms. With, like, with maybe, like, a Sherpa. Yeah. Like, I would like to be in an Adobe yurt <laughs> on the side of a tropical mountain with a, just, a, 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 like, one of those Think Geek people chained to a table, forced to show me how to use every aspect and all the shortcuts. Not exactly just the basic stuff. Right. I want to tell, push these three buttons and automatically it edits. I just right. want somebody, I'm going to force somebody. Oh, that sounds like I'm threatening. But <laughs> I, that would be my ideal. I'd be in a yurt on the side of a mountain. A with geek squad slave. A geek squad. <laughs> I would have my geek squad minion. Minion. Teaching me how to use Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop and Adobe Suites. That's awesome. Yeah. To, no, I, oh, man. Yeah, like, there's so much you can dig in with all that. Yeah. But I think. And I just don't I, have the time. I think the state of podcasting will probably get a lot more diverse. People will have a lot of choices. And God, it already is, isn't it? I know, but I think... It's going so deep. I think, hopefully, that it will empower a lot of people who don't feel like they have a voice. Kids. Anytime I hear stories about, especially LGBT youth, where they're not, they have nowhere to go and they have right. no voice, if this could be a medium to make them... Beyond, if they have nobody in their own community to be able to reach out, or anybody who feels that alienation to be able to reach out and find their tribe, yeah, that well, would be my dream. We met a little girl out here, Izzy. I'm actually going to try to interview her tomorrow if I can. I mean, I think she's 11, yeah, 11, about to turn 12, uh -huh. and her dad produces a little podcast for her, and that's like all anti-bullying and oh, wow. like all this cool stuff and everything. Yeah, a really neat little girl, and, and she enjoys singing too. So it's like a medium to kind of help. Go yeah. back and forth and do both things. So and that's cool. so yeah. wonderful of of a family to be supportive like that. Mm -hmm. There's there's so many things that this technology can bring to us, and, and people just kind of sh flutter it away. It's lovely to see it when it's done right. Yeah, for me, I think that has been the biggest appeal with podcasting specifically, because you've got a lot of different social media forms. But with podcasting, you've got such a powerful tool that's so accessible to so many people, oh, you know, yeah. like it's such a powerful vehicle, mm -hmm. you know, that, and, and anybody can like, and look, if I can do this, if I can figure this out, then any 12 year old girl can figure it out oh, yeah. easily. And, and to be able to have that ease of technology, that ease of under of opportunity. And then, so yeah, I mean, eventually the, you figure the numbers are going to work oh, yeah. out where there's just eventually enough. We're going to, everybody's come to the got, their audience everybody even if it's one or two people yeah it's still one or two like-minded people that you wouldn't have had exposure to any other way and the weirder the better i mean that's almost better to start out that way because you the, I, it seems like the more you can get into like a little niche like that then it pulls up people into it oh, yeah. as opposed to the other way around for sure and and a lot of times People that don't even maybe fit that niche find out about it from other people. It's all like that that hair shampoo commercial. I told two people, and so on, right. and so on, <laughs> right. and so on. And that's that's that really organic growth, right? Yeah, it's yeah. really a down home <laughs> internet movement. Yeah. <laughs> Given that all your experience and background, and how long y'all been doing this, um, for maybe some new podcasters that are listening or, or people that are thinking about doing a podcast what kind of advice would you give to them or to somebody like me who's at that I'm you know creeping on that one year mark 
so like there's different things that happen at different stages of growth through this arch, yeah. you know, what advice would you have for somebody who's just getting started? And then what advice would you have for somebody like me who's been at it for a minute, but maybe hasn't had the success that they're hoping for? I think for people that start, don't hold expectations of what you think other people want. The biggest thing is you are your audience. So what would you like to hear? What would you, the whole point of podcasting is, is to entertain through experience. And if you're enjoying the experience, other people will. Not everybody will, but, but somebody will. And even if you just reach those one or two people, you know, we'll go for it. Don't go into it thinking that this is going to replace your job, that this is a end all be all. That's the right. you know the great white hope of 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 this the, is what the new entrepreneur vehicle that yeah. everybody wants to jump on board. Most of the people that have gotten really successful have fallen into that success just because they love it, right? And they've been able to find enough people that want to support them to make them profitable. But that's, that's a one in a million chance. So you don't do it because you want to make money out of it. it you do it because you love it. And as yeah. long as you still love it, then you, you're golden. You're, as long as you're, you're happy with your product, that's really all that matters. Yeah, well, that was one of the things that appealed to me about you and made me want to have you on for the show is like it's so refreshing to to speak to someone who doesn't have that agenda of making money at this nope. like your agenda is not at all to make money you have no intentions of trying to monetize you really want to just nope. do your thing because you love it it's fun and what you're doing is cool and it's fun and like it's neat you know and that's my biggest reward is whenever i look at responses i mean we have we have a good healthy number of facebook followers and a good subscriber like people that listen uh-huh. and you if, have an audience yeah we have an audience and if it engages them and makes them talk or even makes them talk to each other right hell yeah, yeah. that's 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 the ultimate Mission goal accomplished, yeah. Right? yeah you've united people in a circumstance that they would never have been in otherwise as opposed to the rest of social media where it's divide 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 nah, dragging them you know it's like it's refreshing to see something that's more of unifying concept and, and there, don't get me wrong, there have been people that have posted negative things of, of just questions of... Oh, sure. They'll always be your haters. But honestly, at least they're saving somebody else from being... I, I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't, I don't really sweat it because, yet again, what, like we are talking, you're doing it because you like it. And as long as you're not doing anything offensive or hurtful... Have at it. Have at it. Yeah, have man, fun dude. with it. And, well, and what I like is like, be you. You yeah. know, like it's so, because I think so many times, like, one of the cool things about the podcast is it does kind of force you to figure out who you are oh, and yeah. what you want to, how you want to define yourself. And so I think a lot of times people are a little lost and kind of hung up on, on who we are and how we define ourselves. And or you're trying to be a persona. Yeah. And you're trying to be a character, which if, yes. if that's what you're going to be, then commit to it like right, like it. Colbert Report used to be that was a character right. and he committed to it but he was still himself outside of there and I feel like like I've discovered about myself that I curse like a sailor <laughs> and I can be, get pretty raunchy and gross <laughs> and I I have embraced that about myself I don't try to yep. hide it but I also yeah. don't try to force it if it, it wouldn't make it you it wouldn't nah. be you otherwise right no yeah. and I will like you've seen tonight I will dance like a like an idiot <laughs> without alcohol uh, with no problems right. um, but like for somebody who's already in it uh, what I came down to was reevaluating my passion take it down to the nuts and bolts Beautiful. what is it that you want to accomplish and what yes. you want to see out of it and if you don't feel like you're still ticking those boxes of yes i am accomplishing it and yes i am filling my goal then look at how you can change it yeah. what do you need to change like maybe if i ask a person to ask me questions instead of you know yeah, i ask them questions right. but come come to the table with five questions you want to ask me because then that keeps you on your toes and it'll keep it fresh for you Things that will keep it alive for you. That's, I mean, it's kind of like, like the, the old like uh, Sullivan show. Ed Sullivan show where the guy had the poles and the plates on top of them. You're constantly balancing plates, right. and you're. Right, but that guy was engaged. <laughs> he knew he yeah. had to keep those plates <laughs> right. spinning. Got to keep them spinning. We don't want to start slowing down. Got to pick it up. Yeah, more. 
And and that's what you're doing. You're right. keeping those plates a spinning that's so a you can analogy. keep people really entertained. Yeah. And if it means you switch it up a little bit, even in subtle ways that only you know, if it keeps it alive, that's, Again, that's it, what you do. Keeping it fresh for you, then yeah. yeah. That's we, all you got to do. Nice. I love that. And see if it gives you new eyes that you can take it in a new direction or you enhance the direction and you really enjoy it. So you got a lot of different things you're involved in. And what's really cool about this kind of, I don't want to say reawakening, that sounds cheesy, but like the, through your progression of to where you are now, um, what's one item on your bucket list that you'd like to do? Ooh. Oh, that's hard. Because you're already kind of fulfilling a lot of those. Fill, you're filling a lot of those buckets now with doing the podcast. What's really weird it. is that what they weren't on my bucket list. They just kind of added themselves. <laughs> they just uh, got inserted. You're just like, oh, well, guess I'm doing a podcast now. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, I think what I would love to do is be able to get to the point where I have a legitimacy that I can talk to people that I've always admired but have always been on that. We're not in the same circles an example would be? Uh, Julie Andrews. Hmm. Or. She's my favorite. Or even Mary like Poppins, I love recently, uh, I would, I, this is going to sound weird. I would love to talk to Kathy Griffin or, or Elizabeth Warren. Why or would people, that be weird? I could but, see you. Well, the, the thing is, is that it, I, I guess it's not really weird. I'm not, I'm not a comedian, so that's not really where it, it comes from. It comes from. But you're in a, com- a comedy troupe. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> so that's kind of hard to say that. <laughs> but I mean, just of people that I admire, yeah, not no, necessarily I because yeah. I want to be them, but because I want to be able to say, I admire the living crap out of you. And I just want to be able to say that I've said that. Nice. Take it as it will. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need anything from you. I just want you to tell you. That's what I would really like to do. I have certain people in this life that I have admired for so long and I could just look at them and I, it's not like fangirling out or anything like that. Yeah. But just, just let them know you appreciate them kind of thing. Just genuinely to say, I really appreciate what you do and I feel like sometimes you have driven me to be a better person. So that's thanks. Awesome. And that's it. I don't want anything. No, I don't need you to sign me yeah, a, sign either, a boob yeah. or anything. No, just want you to know that. It's kind of like one of those things where they say, tell people you love them while they're there. Yeah, while you can. Yeah, and I think sometimes people in the public eye don't realize the impact that they have or they think it's it's adulation or something like that. It's not that. It's just I think you're cool. Yeah. That's it. Well, and it's cool to kind of keep it on that level. That, yeah. Not where it's not a, such a fan, oh, gaga kind of nah. concept. That that would be the place where I would I would like to get to the point where I was credible enough to be in a situation to be in in that well you're definitely credible enough in any circle that you want to be in for what it's worth i don't think you'd have any and what's what i find interesting is that i could see you in that circle having that conversation and not that that seems totally normal to me that seems totally plausible if you will (laughs) like for what it's worth i appreciate that maybe if it's out in the universe it can happen (laughs) all you gotta do is ask yep it's funny how those things kind of work out man yep yep but um, thank you for taking the time. Um, I really appreciate your friendship and getting to know you while we were yeah. here. And, and again, like I said, somebody who actually is showing a legitimate interest in people following through on what they say, I think that's just, um, the, there's not enough of that in this world. So I'm grateful for that. No. As we wrap up, I always give everybody an opportunity to plug any of their social media that they want to talk about, how people can get in contact with you, and also any businesses organizations but more specifically charities that you support i always want to make sure that everybody has a platform to promote anything that they want to put out there if you want to talk about uh, anything specific about comedy anything coming up that you've got that you want to share with the world this is your chance uh let's see i all of our podcasts are on neozaz.com uh we do have facebook pages for a couple of things uh grady's the great ages movie debate we do a lot of stuff on facebook a lot of our contact is on there that's usually my best point of contact is through that and for charities I'm a big supporter of two big ones in the local Orlando area. Um, I am a big supporter of the Pet Alliance. They're a wonderful, wonderful uh, organization that that adopts out pets to loving homes. And and I have quite a few friends that volunteer there. And um, also one that I'm I'm trying to get to a volunteer level with uh, 
hopefully in the next year, is uh, the Zebra Coalition with uh, LGBT youth awesome. to just be a support and be some kind of help. So Very those are cool. my two. Where where can everybody find you next time? You got a com- you got a show coming up uh, for the comedy troupe and or podcast convention. Anything coming up where folks can find you? I'll probably be volunteering at a podcast convention <laughs> near you. Uh, but the it. next big thing I got is uh, the Orlando Fringe Festival. It is oh, one of the yeah, largest fringe yeah. festivals in the United States. Perfect. I think in the world. I think Ireland or Scott Edinburgh is the is the oldest oldest. But uh, Orlando Fridge is one of the biggest and oldest hmm. in, in North America. Nice. Uh, and we'll be performing at Breakthrough Theater of Winter Park, and we're going to be doing a show. It's called All New Review Endgame. Cool. I'll be pulling Excellent. out my biggest Elizabeth Warren impression yet. <laughs> Hopefully. Awesome. Uh, I so. wish I was going to be here to check it out. Well, well, there will we'll be pictures. To... Oh, yeah. There will be evidence. There will be evidence of this. Well, Christy, thank you so much for your time. It was thank an you. absolute pleasure, and look forward to the next time. Well, thank you, Nate. This was an absolute pleasure getting to know you. Take care. Thank you. Hey, y'all. Thanks for listening. So, what did you think? What did I miss? Was there a topic you wish we had covered? Was there an area of discussion you want to know more about? Or was the whole thing just too long? Please. Send us your questions and feedback on social media to at Extraordinary Podcast or check out our website, ExtraordinaryPodcast.net. Subscribe there for all the latest episodes, blog posts, and more. And if you're tired of living the same old ordinary life, shoot me an email, Nate at ExtraordinaryPodcast.net, and I will send you your own customizable blueprint that will walk you through step-by-step how to create your own extraordinary life. And if you or someone you know already fits the profile, you can submit a request to be interviewed on the website as well. Finally, if you like what you heard or learned today, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and follow the Extraordinary Podcast on all your favorite platforms like YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes. And if you feel inspired, show your support for the show by donating through Patreon. It is through this financial support that we are able to continue to bring to light ordinary people living extraordinary lives. Thank you for your support, and most of all, just being you. This is Nate G, and we'll see you next week.